Okay, we're here in the country's heartland in the nation's breadbasket, about uh, two, kilo uh, two miles north of Johnston. About the Johnston Air Force Base is about one mile back that way. That's a biplane. They use that for training purposes. They knew we were shooting over here. They'd be over here before you could say Department of Homeland Security three times. But that's okay. They don't have to know. I wanted to show you a, uh, something of a new trend that's been uh, going around the area for a while. This is, a, this is an age-old idea that's been going through something or a revival around these parts recently. And uh, it's basically, it used to be called subsistence farming. Nowadays they call it a dacha, and I'd like to show you around mine here. Let's go on in. Just come on right in. Basically, the idea behind this is with uh, food prices the way they are, you've got, well, you've got uh, state taxes, you've got local taxes, federal taxes, you've got the fees, you've got the processing fees, you've got the transport fees, you've got pretty much everything. By the time it gets from the earth to your mouth, then you're paying about a dollar a piece. You're paying about more than, much more than it would cost you just to grow it yourself. As you can see, it's about an acre of land, and on this, on this one acre of land, we can feed an entire family for pretty much the entire year, not counting the meat, that is, not counting the beef, not counting the swine, whatever you want to grow. Uh, we've got enough potatoes. This is enough potatoes to cover pretty much the family's needs through the, through the entire year. And then over here, we've got, uh, we've got some bushes, some kind of berry. I don't know what that was. We just kind of found it here, and then we... Uh, we tried it out. It's not poisonous or anything. We, we uh, ate some, woke up about two days later, just happy as a lark. So we planted pretty much the entire row there along that, uh, along that fence with these berry bushes. I still got to figure out what they are. Uh, the trees you see up here, uh, these, are, these are mostly cherry trees, apple trees. These two are apple trees. And there's some uh, buckthorn over there. And we've got some shadberry. I don't know what kind of berry that is. It's, uh, Anyway, it's good. And the compost pit is over there. We've got some, uh, got some gooseberries. Got all together about 40 different kinds of fruit and berries on this one acre of land. Can you believe that? And when you take into consideration a lot of the junk that you find in these foods that you find in the supermarket these days, I mean, you've got you've got what uh, mad cow disease in it, you've got hoof and mouth, you've got swine flu, you got mercury poisoning, DDT, GM crops, low carb foods. You got arsenic in it, herbicides, pesticides, what have you. I mean, by the time you get that into your mouth, you got more junk in there than you got food. It's better just to grow it yourself, and then you're sure that you don't have any of that stuff in there. You've just got what you put in the ground, your own fertilizer. You can get that out of the outhouse back there. That's everything is a self-contained system. All right, let's take a look at some of the things that we grow around here. This is a potato patch, as I said, this is a, just this patch and another couple of rows, and you've got enough potatoes to feed pretty much your whole family, plus the cat next door for the whole year. And then we've got what, the well over here is fresh groundwater. I mean, there's, uh, you can be sure there's no chloroform, no additives or anything like that in there. And uh, here we've got all the spices. We've got, we've got various lettuce and uh, we've got parsley back in there. We've got dill for any holes that need to be patched. Got some uh, pepper up there and somewhere. Here we had some garlic. It's all been harvested already. Come on. Here we got the various legumes, the, the root vegetables. Got cabbage over here, beets over here, carrots, black radishes, more carrots. This is the t this was the onion patch. You can see some onions have been harvested. They're over there lying in the sun to dry. And this is the lettuce over here. Here's some more carrots. Tomatoes. There's some cucumbers over there where you see the metal hoops. Here's one of the cucumbers on the vine. I didn't even know they grew on vines. Here's one of the red beets. Nice and big, that one. Here's a couple of the squash. Okay, here over there you got 
You got the raspberries. There aren't too many of them because most of them got frozen out during the winter. It got down to minus, what, minus, what, 40 degrees, 30, 30 something Celsius. And then here we've got some strawberries. Most of them got frozen out in the winter too. We had to plant the new ones. There's our barbecue for when we come up here on the weekend. We have some friends and barbecue some tomatoes and so on. This is where the tomatoes grow. Got to grow them in a greenhouse around here, otherwise it's too cold. Those are finger tomatoes. That's where they're kind of long and green like that. I'll get a close-up of them for you. Come on over this way. This is a water supply. Hey, this is a good old-fashioned country outhouse. I have to put a lock on the door to keep people from going in there to smoke. Yeah, it's unisex. Only one person can pretty much fit in there at a time anyway. This is a shower. Water supply is up on the roof. There you go, that's the shower. You have a peek inside there. It's a, also unisex, about as unisex as we could possibly get it. So you can see we've pretty much got all the creature comforts taken care of and a couple of the regular comforts besides. It's a great place to come up here for the weekend and just relax and get a little bit of peace and quiet and some fresh air on a weekend. And all the farms are all wired for electricity. They've all got power. This is the well. Need a professional well digger to dig one of these things. You can't do it yourself. And this is our gazebo, the Vyasitka. Um, we built it ourselves. It wasn't as hard to build as it looks. Pretty easy. And um, uh, it's a great place to come up here with your friends and so on and have a couple of brewskis or something like that, which I think I'm going to do right now. This is great. This one's Stary Mielnik. And this one's uh, Oveloi. So let's pop a couple of these and see what happens. There's a natural development whereby you eventually get about as many people leeching off of the production process as it'll sustain. That's only natural. I don't blame anyone for doing that. Everybody jumps on the bandwagon, whether it's state or private, whether it's taxes, advertising, everything lumped all together, they, they'll go to the maximum that the process will sustain. And then from the other direction you've got another development, which is the advance in farming technology, agricultural technology, which allows you to, to set up a, a farm like this with an investment of no more than about maybe an hour a day. You can lump it all together into maybe two trips a week, and you've got yourself a subsistence farm. You've got yourself a completely functioning dacha for much, much less than the price of the groceries for the year. There's so many of these dacha subsistence farms that are in such a small area. Your next door neighbor is only a couple of meters away. And sometimes they come up here and they start playing their loud music and pray on. It can really get on your nerves a little bit. Сегодня президент России Владимир Путин призвал спортивных руководителей из разных стран содействовать признанию Сочи Олимпийской столицей 2014 года. Президент заявил об этом на заседании Европейского союза дзюдо.